Stampers Kim from StampingAndPerfection.com. Thanks for joining me today. I want to share a card I'm creating for my um, Atlantic Hearts Sketch Challenge this week. And I'm going to use a stencil that I have. I've had for this for a long time. This is from Catherine, Catherine Pooler, and it's called Perfect Vines. I really like this stencil. And um, I'm using, I'm going to use some Bristol Smooth paper, cardstock paper, and I always get it in pads like this. I've cut down a piece to four and a quarter by five and a half, and this one has a lot of pieces that when you brush stuff over it, they lift up. So I like to take um, this Pixie Spray, which is a light tack. It's a repositionable. I'm just going to spray just like that. And you do want to shake it well and hold it just up uh, a few inches from your stencil and then I'm going to let it dry for a minute and attach it to my paper. So let me show you while I'm letting that dry what else I'm using. I'm using, I'm going to use three colors. I'm going to make a rainbow background and I, um, you can see I started out something like this but I didn't use my tack spray and it moved a lot and this I'll do something with this I haven't decided what yet but I'll do some kind of technique with that so um, I'm using three different ink colors I'm using rouge suede shoes and sauna and I think I might change that rouge out to my rock and red color I think I want that to be a little bit stronger. So I'm going to use that and I'm going to use this stamp set I got from Pink Fresh Studios. This is called um, Believe. It is their word series and I really love this sentiment here. Okay, so um, let me see if this is ready. So you notice I, I sprayed it inside this box so I didn't get it all over everything. This cost me like three bucks. It, um, it's it's Tim Holtz's splat box and actually I really like having that I usually used to use random boxes but now I just always have this box right behind me that I can use so I can just tack this right down to my surface just like that and I do intend to cut a quarter of an inch off uh, like um, lengthwise and widthwise, so probably I'll cut an eighth of an inch off all around. I'm going to use one of my Picket Fence um, blender brushes. I really like these brushes. I'm going to start with my yellow. So I'm going to start with this sauna color, and I'm just going to lightly brush this, and I'm going to put this right in the middle. I'm just going to go down the middle, and I'm going to make the yellow kind of wide because I want to get a whole rainbow out of this. So I'm going to do it so the red and the yellow combine to give me orange, and the yellow and the blue combine to give me green. So I'm going to make a wide swatch of this. And you can see how quickly the ink blends onto the card and I get a nice smooth blend. I didn't have to start off the page. I just really like these brushes. So um, I just wipe it off and now I'm going to take that red and then I'm going to start blending the red on there and I'm going to blend the red and the yellow together Need a little bit more red. I want it to be a little bit darker than this. And you know, lots of shades. I'm using these bold colors, but lots of shades of reds or pinks will blend nicely with your yellows to give you that strip of orange, which is always fun. Okay, so that's that. I want to wipe that red off. Okay, 
So once I have that done, I'm going to take this suede shoes. This is one of my favorite Catherine Pooler blues. It's just a fabulous blue. It's bright, it's happy, and I'm going to blend that into the yellow. So I get a little bit of green there. I'm just going to peel this off. Now I'll clean off my stencil after I'm all done with this card and I'll just take some stamp cleaner and clean that right off so that'll clean off beautifully. And I'm going to leave the sticky stuff on the side of that though because um, then I won't have to spray it again next time I use my stencil. Now I'm going to trim this down to four and a quarter or four by five and a quarter. Um, the card sketch that I'm using calls for a diagonal cut across the card. I should have printed this to show you. I'll have this on my website, this, um, this particular sketch. And you can check it out at AtlanticHeartsSketchChallenge.blogspot.com. My website is StampingImperfection.com. So I want to cut this, I want this higher on the side, so I'm just going to cut this at an angle. And I, I don't like the way this came out, so I'm actually going to cut a little slice out of there. So I'm going to take just a little bitty slice out, because the card sketch calls for... there to be a space between the top and the bottom of the card, like that. So now I need my card base. And I've got these A2 top folding cards from Simon Says Stamps. These are cut four and a quarter by 11, and they're scored at five and a half. So it's nice and it, it just makes card making so easy when you pull when you can pull out a card base. And since I'm a little short on time today, I'm just going to do just that. Okay, now I'm going to take some of my foam adhesive. I have this gigantic roll of 3M foam tape. I feel like I've had this forever. And I'm just going to cut a hunk and... I just want to pop this up on foam tape. Okay, so now that I have that on the back, I'm just going to stick this down. Just like that. And that's going to create the base of my card. Okay, I could have left a larger um, space if I'd wanted to, but I kind of like just a little bit of white peeking out. And I, would, I have to say, I was pretty tempted to put a strip of gold metallic in the center there. So it, that was pretty tempting to me. But decided not to, because like I said, I want to keep this pretty quick. So the next part of this, I'm going to take a piece of, I have a whole bunch of scraps of cardstock cut this size, and the reason I have those is because these are the things that I use, the, the pieces left from when I get a new stamp set and I put it in the envelope, I always put a piece of white cardstock. So I have a lot of pieces this size, and I like to use them for things like this, like this is kind of perfect. So I loved, and I hope this fits on here, let me see how this is fitting. I really loved this Believe. I thought it was gorgeous. Let me make sure I have the Believe straight.
ink this up with my Versamark or whatever embossing ink you have. There's lots of different brands. I like the Altenew embossing ink and I like, I really like the Simon Says embossing ink also. It just happens to be the one I always grab is the Versamark because I've been using it for so many years. I think I've had the same Versamark ink pad for like, I don't know, six or eight years. It's crazy. You can just keep re-inking it and reusing it. Okay, so let me pull this out. And I don't probably won't need this, but I'll put this down here. I have my black embossing powder, and this is Wow embossing powder, which is great embossing powder. I'll just scoop a bunch of this on. Now, Wow tells you that um, I was watching. Uh, an interview that Catherine Pooler did with the um, the WOW embossing I don't know whether she's the president or the owner but she says not to put your embossing powders in little containers like this um, because they actually do an anti-static thing when they they put them in the containers and when you pour them into the big containers like this it does they, she says it does mess it up. I've never had any trouble with static doing it this way. So I'm going to keep doing this because I find that I use my embossing powders so much more now that I have them stored this way. It's, I don't know why, I find it neater and quicker. I suppose it shouldn't matter, but it does. This is a beautiful stamp set, and I'm going to do a secondary sentiment because um, I love, the, there's so many good sentiment, secondary sentiments, but I love that magic is all around, all things are possible, and good things coming, so I'm thinking this will be a beautiful one. And I'm going to pull out, and it's buried under the inks that I just used, my embossing station. So I've got my Totally Tiffany embossing station here. Now this time I will clamp this down because um, I, the whole thing is not embossed so I will clamp down this part and I'm going to cut this part off so I don't clamp it down on in case it like on parts of the cardstock that I want to see or that I'm using because I fear that this is going to dent my paper so much easier to do that. I just love this embossing station. And that's at totallytiffany.com. Okay, so that, and I, I got a lot of, I was pretty messy. Notice I don't use, I don't even know if you can see it here, but I have a lot of spots there. I was actually thinking that I would color in the leaves and stuff, but they came out black. So I will not be doing that. I'm just going to cut this off, though. See if I can trim it down to... There we go. Now the sketch calls for it just to be placed over... Um, over like this. It actually calls for a square. I'm using a rectangle and um, I want to put a secondary sentiment on this and I also think I want to splatter some paint on this. Like I would like more of this yellow. I feel like I didn't get enough yellow on there so I'm going to do some ink splattering 
So I'm just I just swiped my pad onto my um, Tim Holtz rubber mat here. It's not rubber, but Teflon. And I'm gonna take. I like using a big brush, a big round paintbrush. So I have this, and I have all my. I have a lot of brushes in here that I use for stenciling and watercoloring and all kinds of things. So I'm going to use, this is a number 14. This is huge actually. I don't even know if I ever paint with this. But I'm, I'm just going to really load this brush up. I'm just, you know, rolling the water into it. You can add as many colors as you like, but I love a little splatter. I think it's just super fun. I'm going to let that dry a minute. Okay, now I still feel like this needs something. And I think the something that it needs is a little... Um, I feel like it needs a little bling on the edge. I'm going to take my gold embossing powder and I'm going to take my Versamark pad. And I just kind of want to go around the edges of this. So I'm going to take... And I'm just going to dunk, I'm just going to run the edge of my cardstock. I'm just pouncing the edge all around. I, you know, I don't want a big, I could put a piece of gold foil cardstock behind this, like a mat. But I'm just going to dunk the edges in there. I can always add more if I don't feel like it's got enough. always do a second coat so I'll just heat the heat set this okay and you can see that adds just a little gold touch to the edge I think it's kind of a nice little touch so I'm going to put that down here I'm going to also pop this up on some of this foam tape Just like that. So I've got lots of color on this card. And then I just want to do a quick little, I want to do a quick little thing here. Ah, oh, this is pretty perfect. Everything will fall into place. My daughter needs this one. This is the one she's getting. And this one I want white. And I'm gonna use my I'm gonna use my Hero Arts white detail embossing powder because this sentiment has super tiny letters. And I don't want the I don't want to use an embossing powder that puffs up and fills in the letters. Okay, so I finished heat setting this. And I have one of these Stampin' Up. Um, what are these called? These are foam adhesive strips are like an eighth of an inch. They're really nice for this kind of thing. And I want it to go, I'm just going to put it over the top of this. I don't want to cover up the sentiment or the border that I have. So I'm going to put it like that, just like that. And then I want to add some bling. So those are Studio Cadia Clear Bubbles. I love, those are one of my favorite embellishments. I just finish off a card and give it a little special touch. This card's going to go to my daughter because she's got a lot going on and she needs to know that everything will fall into place. So thanks so much for watching. Stop by my blog at stampingimperfection.com. I'll put the links to all the products below. I really appreciate that you stopped by. Make sure you give this video a like and ring that bell so you get notifications of when I post other videos. I'm going to include some links to other videos that I've um, come out with recently to share more tips, tricks, techniques, and ideas. I hope you find them inspiring. Thanks so much for stopping by.